Hello, this is Batman, and I've taken over Fanboy Junction. Today, we're going to be talking about Marvel versus DC. Of course, my movies are the best, but that goes without saying since I'm the best hero ever. Except for, you're doing a horrible version of my voice. <coughs> Sorry, can't do it. Hey guys, it's Matthew. And welcome to another episode of Fanboy Junction. We are doing what I promised the other day, and that's talking about DC movies versus Marvel movies. Now I know that the DC Cinematic Universe eh, technically is now just started with Man of Steel, but whatever. We're actually just going to talk about the movies versus the movies. Um couple quick things before I get into this though I've got to talk about the Spider-Man 2 teaser trailer I wasn't really a fan of Amazing Spider-Man I thought it was okay but it was too much of a retread of the first movie in the Raimi series that I just kind of was like eh, I wasn't a fan but after watching this teaser I think I'm actually going to go see this movie in the theater I mean you know Grimlock is one of the villains aside. The action looked like, you know, given today's technology, what they didn't have then, they have now. The action looks solid. Uh, the characters look good. I mean, you've got a ton of great actors in there. So, yeah, why not? I'm excited at the end of that with the whole... Through the different electrodes and he's all... I mean, I was like, yeah. So, yes. Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, I guess I'm seeing in the theater. Anyway, all right, so... Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about Marvel versus DC. And I've kind of decided that I've got to do a little bit of qualifying for the Marvel versus DC thing. I think, to be fair, I've got to start with Batman Begins for DC. Just because that is, in a way, the start of their cinematic universe. I mean, yeah, Man of Steel is actually the opening to all the collecting and having all the characters together but Batman Begins is really what put DC back on the map before then everybody just laughed at the DC films so I'm going to say Batman Begins, The Dark Knight um, <clears throat> Dark Knight Rises, Green Lantern, Man of Steel and the potential of Man of Steel 2, Batman versus Superman with Wonder Woman in there somehow, who knows what maybe eating so she's like bigger but enough I'm not going to go on that um, and then with the Marvel films we're going to go with the beginning of course of their Marvel Cinematic Universe which was the Iron Man and you've got you know Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor Captain America, Avengers, Iron Man 3 Thor 2 that's kind of where I'm what I'm going to do the comparison um, yeah Marvel has a couple definitely has more movies but that's going to be part of what I'm going to discuss so, going forward with that, I'm going to start with the tone, okay? And I think this is where, obviously, Marvel is ahead of the game. They have had a pretty consistent tone with their films. There's some seriousness, but it's all kind of a lighthearted adventure. And honestly, that's what those comic books are, is they are pretty, you know, for the most part, they kind of, you know, there's some humor in there, there's some drama in there, but a lot of it's an action adventure. And I think that's what's really kind of made the Marvel Cinematic Universe work. Um, you've got great actors in all the lead roles, um, even though Hulk, you know, changes constantly. But, you know, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, um, you know, villains of with Loki and, um, you know, dude and his name escapes me in Iron Man 2 I mean you've got a lot of good performances Sam Rockwell so tone wise I think the Marvel films definitely are ahead of the game but I think therein lies the problem with DC films is that the comics themselves have a bad tone or not a bad tone but they don't have a matching tone so with batman batman tone of batman comics are very dark very gritty superman is all hope and light i mean if you look at the cartoons the batman cartoon and the superman cartoon the batman cartoon was very dark and the superman cartoon was very light so 
what you have to do now is to make those characters exist together. Because even when they had the Batman and Superman characters together in the cartoons, they had to kind of have a medium. Well, now what they've done with Man of Steel is to kind of darken it a bit. And I think that grittiness kind of takes away from what Superman really is, which is, you know, hope and all that kind of stuff. So tone-wise, Marvel seems to have a complete package, a much better cohesive tone throughout all the films they've done. And with DC, it seems like, well, Dark Knight really works, so now we're going to make everything really dark. Um, you know, granted, it's only been the first film, but Man of Steel was pretty dark especially for a superman film and yeah you know i've had discussions with some people that well man of steel is kind of like after that now he's actually going to be superman uh, yes i can see where you're coming from but you know superman is hope we need some brightness in there and now that they have batman in his next film I don't see how they're going to be able to kind of keep keep brightening the tone of the Man of Steel films if now you've got Batman, where you've got he's got to exist in a darker tone. So we'll just see how that goes. Um, but really, I mean, one of the things I think you have to compare is weak links in the two cinematic universes. And when I say weak links, I mean characters that should not work on film. And for DC, that's Green Lantern. And for Marvel, that's Thor. And before I went and saw Thor, the thing I was really worried about is how are they going to pull the gods thing off? How are they going to have him do the flying and the magic and everything like that? And I thought they did a pretty good job of kind of sidestepping the whole gods thing by just saying, well, you know what? They're actually aliens, interdimensional aliens. They're not really gods, which was perfect because in the comics they're pretty much just like deities but with the movies they make them interdimensional beings that are very long lived and very strong and now you don't have to worry about the religious implications of having gods in the movies but he was definitely the most far-fetched of the characters and they pulled it off and part of what helped pull it off is that He's in Asgard for a good amount of it, and then he goes to Earth for a while, and then he returns to Asgard. It's not going back and forth, so it's not jarring from world to world. Whereas with the Green Lantern movie, being that he's supposed to be in space and that it's the power ring and creating things out of nothing with this weird green energy, he was kind of, of the first, like Superman and Batman, of those three films I had, he was the one that was probably going to be the, the far fetch, And they just failed on that one. Um, part of, for me with Green Lantern, the moment he left Earth, he should have just stayed in space. I think having the green powers and all that weird, you know, constructs looks ridiculous on Earth. I think it works perfectly in space and wouldn't have been as so jarring. And I think that's the thing that Thor did right, is they let you get used to the idea of Asgard, brought him to Earth, then he wasn't really Asgardian until the end, so there wasn't a lot of Asgardian battling on Earth. And that's what throws a lot of people off. Is when you have s magic and space and weird things happening on Earth, it doesn't mesh. And now you've got craziness. But they didn't have that happen until the end of Thor so that the audience was used to it. But with Green Lantern, he goes up in space. Within two days, he's Green Lantern. He comes back, starts doing constructs in the middle of Hot Wheels things. And it just looked ridiculous. So... For those reasons, definitely Marvel got it, DC lost it. I will say though, Ryan Reynolds is a fantastic actor. That movie is not a failure due to him at all. He did what he was supposed to do. I thought he was good in the role. You know, great actor, just a bad movie. So now you've got you know, two kind of stalwart characters. You gotta compare Captain America to Superman or Man of Steel. And again, I don't want to, you know, sound like a broken record. Captain America. He was Captain America before he became Captain America. I mean, his personality, he was righteous, he was stalwart. I mean, even the fact that the girl falls in love with him before he goes through the whole process. I thought that really was clever writing and keeping with how important his personality was and that he didn't just develop it after he became a soldier. It was already there. And with Superman, I think they're... They're building up to that, 
but it should have happened in the first film. He should have had that Superman thing by the last act of the film, not the two minutes when it's over and then we see him as a real Superman in the next movie. Because, hey, you know, honestly, what if it failed? Granted, you know, Warner Bros. did the right thing and said, well, we're not going to make a great uh, superhero movie. We're just going to make a great action movie with a superhero in it, and then people just go see the action. And that's that. it worked. The gamble paid off. And now, hopefully, we'll see a really good representation of Superman in Man of Steel 2. Now, whether he'll have any kind of screen time, given that Batman and Wonder Woman are in that movie, that remains to be seen. I mean, I know that with Batman... We all know the origin. We all know he works in cinema. That's easy. So part of me is glad that they're not redoing the origin. But so far, this movie seems to be really, really crowded. Because, you know, the best the thing that keeps popping in my mind is you got Superman, you got Batman, you got Wonder Woman. Okay, now you've got the Trinity, pretty solid three characters. They still haven't announced a villain yet. So unless these people are just fighting themselves... Now you've got a fourth character, potentially fifth, if you have, like, you know, Lex Luthor and Mercy or Joker. I mean, whoever they're going to use. You've got more characters in the movie where we haven't even established Superman as Superman. So I guess they're – I think DC is trying to avoid doing the build-up to the Avengers that Marvel did. I'm hoping it works because I really want to see The Flash and more Wonder Woman on screen. I think time will just tell. So, with that in mind, you got the better plan for Marvel because they did do all their individual films and then did something that had never been done before was have characters of individual films together in one big movie as the Avengers. DC is not doing that now. They're now putting all different characters in different movies so that it, I don't know if, like it's going to be Man of Steel, Man of Steel 2, Batman vs. Superman, and then Justice League build up to it. It's not going to have the same vibe. So, I don't know. I mean, I want the DC Cinematic Universe to work. This is a make or break time for them. they got to make this second film work, or that's it. They're pretty much done for. And given the casting choice of Wonder Woman, eh, we'll see how that works. But with, Mar- with Marvel, they've... They've got it. I mean, you know, they've got their plan, cohesive storyline, cohesive tone. The DC's kind of back and forth. I will say, and those of you who have seen my top 10 list, that the Nolan Dark Knight is the best comic book movie of all time. So DC has cranked out some great films, but collectively their films have been horrible. Um, so that's why, hopefully. Man of Steel 2 is going to be great. Hopefully this Batman vs. Superman vs. Wonder Woman thing is going to work out. And with Marvel, I mean, I, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that there's a huge drop from Iron Man 3's box office and Thor's box office. And I'm curious if they switched those, if Thor had come out first, if it had done the same box office as Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 basically was... The mom- getting, I think, benefit from the momentum of Avengers. So I think that's one thing I would, I, I really would have loved to see if Thor would have done the same numbers as Iron Man 3 if it had come out afterwards. Anyway, so those are my thoughts. Marvel's got it toned better, has their all the stuff planned out much better. DC seems to be reacting, but they're finally getting going the right way. Uh, let's just hope they don't overcrowd it. So that's what I think. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Email me. Boom. Any questions you might have, comment below whether you liked or disagreed or what you want to see or whatever. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.